Hey everyone! So I just got back from my Miyaka River camping trip and now I need to get back to work on this bulkhead mural. So I'll be working on that this week. But first I have a couple little projects that I want to do and I'll show you guys those. Yesterday, Kevin installed the front sumo springs on the van. Uh, you may have seen his other segment where he did the rear sumo springs. If not, I'll put a link here in the description and it may be up here somewhere, <laughs> but uh, you can watch that if you want uh, where he does the rear ones. Uh, so yeah, I have a little, a couple little projects I want to do and then I'm going to get back to work on this bulkhead mule. It's pretty windy today, so I'm not sure how the audio is going to work out, but we did an earlier video where we installed sumo springs on the back of the van and uh, Cindy can probably put a link or something to that video. But for this one, we are going to do another easy install and that's the sumo springs for the front of the van. And it's the same thing, it just helps with the uh, load stability and um, uh, supposedly it's gonna help with the side wind issues that people get when they're driving in high winds with a high, high roof fan. So we'll see how that that helps. So they give you everything you need to install it. They give you the spacer, of course, that goes in between the spring, some zip ties to help hold it in place and from coming off, and then, of course, the instructions. Uh, the first thing I need to do is jack the van up and see how this goes. So I got the van lifted and I got the tension off the spring, so now I just need to try to insert the spacer. And the spacer has a deep groove on one side and a shallow groove on the other and you want to make sure the deep groove is on the bottom and then once we're done with that we're going to try to get some zip ties in there to hold it in place now the instructions say to install the spacer in between the second and third turn down from the top all right so getting these zip ties in might be a little bit tricky i can rotate this around back to where i need it so i'm just going to pull it down and get each one of these started before I cinch them down. I don't know if you can see it, but one side is done. The hardest part was getting the zip ties in there and being able to trim off the excess of the zip tie. Other than that, it was pretty easy. I did use a soapy uh, washcloth and wipe the spacer down, the grooves of the spacer with the soapy water. That seemed to definitely help. They say do not use any kind of petroleum base um, lubricant or anything like that on it, just to use soapy water, and that did help. Now I'm gonna move over and do the other side. All right, so the other side's done. One thing they talked about is making sure that both sides are positioned the same and in the same uh, turn of the spring. So I tried to put it about the second and third turn down from the top. That's what the instructions said. I'm gonna just double check the other side, make sure that that's what I got, uh, lower the van, and then uh, everything will be done. All right, so that's it for the install of Sumo Springs in the front of Cindy's transit van. Um, I did measure beforehand and we had just under 32 inches for the height. And now I measured again and it's just over 32 inches, about 32 and a quarter. So I don't know if the springs actually added any kind of, or the spacers actually added any kind of lift to the front, or if it's just from jacking it up and it hasn't, you know, the springs still need to compress back down and settle in after we drive it. I'm guessing it probably is not gonna you know, raise it in the front or do anything like that. Hopefully it'll help with the stability and the crosswind when Cindy's going down the road. Um, only time's gonna tell that and uh, we'll let you know if it does. So one of the first projects I wanna do today is install this knife bar. And this is kind of what it does, what it looks like here on the box. You can see where you can hang your knives and anything stainless steel really from the magnet. And it, I'm going to hang it. I originally thought I would hang it here. That's why I bought such a short one because it, you know, fits perfectly. Let me grab this. You can see it better. <laughs> it fits so perfectly right there. 
but hanging it up there and hanging the knives, I realized I think this faucet is just going to be in the way too much because sometimes, you know, this moves around and it'll just constantly, you know, I'll be having to fiddle with it. So I decided instead I'm going to hang it over here, which I think will be a better location for it. I'll hang right there, and then there's plenty of room for handles and that sort of thing to hang. So, let me show you how it goes on. Okay, so this has screws, and this section here, on this is the back of it, will screw into the wall using these screws. But the screws, it looks like they're too long, because this is three-quarter inch plywood here. And these look like they're at least an inch. So I'm gonna have to find some different screws. But it looks pretty easy. It says you have to be really careful because you can pinch yourself here. You use this plastic to pull it apart. I have a feeling it won't be that easy. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's strong. All right. I may get Kevin to help me hold this while I pull it up so I don't pinch my hands and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I just had Kevin hold the base and then I pulled on these and it came off pretty easy that way. Because these little edges that run along here look like they'd be very sharp. And if you've got your skin in between that and this backing, I think you could easily cut yourself. So since he was here, I got his help. <laughs> All right, so now this plate is what's going to get screwed onto here and then we'll just put this magnet facing on top of it. it doesn't get any simpler than that. <laughs> These screws stick out just a little bit, so I gotta get them good and tight. I'm hoping I can kinda sink it into that space. Hopefully that won't stick out too much. I don't know. Okay, well this is where I'm probably gonna hurt my fingers. We will see. I'm gonna try to like slide it down and get the edge on. Keep my fingers out of the way. Oh my oh. gosh, if my fingers had been in there, that would have hurt. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not that. on yet. It's almost there. But man, that scared me. I think I still got one edge. Is it? Let me look. No, I think that's on. Yeah, I can see where that would really be dangerous. <laughs> But it's on there now. So, well, let's stick some something on there. <laughs> Woo. I have to figure out exactly what I want to hang on there. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not going to slide off. I mean, there is some play there, but I think that's because this knife is slightly beveled in. But it's got some force. Hang it that way too. Ooh, it actually seems to hang better that way. But then I... I don't know. <laughs> I can always remove it if I don't like it. <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a try. It's getting windy in here. <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna be working on next. I bought this drawer liner material. You can see it's this rubbery stuff that keeps things from sliding around in the drawers. But I'm going to be using it instead to place between all my dishes. What I've been doing is placing these paper towels, things like that, in between the dishes. Washcloths, anything I can find that will keep it from rattling as I'm going down the road. And as you can see, that creates a lot of extra bulk and stuff here that I really don't need. Plus, it's a waste of paper towels, and 
when I use my hand towels and washcloths and they get dirty, then, you know, I'm still searching around for something to put between. So I wanted something that can be dedicated just to that purpose and wouldn't take up a lot of room. And so I bought this drawer liner material and I'm going to cut it into different shapes that work well between some of the items that I commonly store. And I think it's going to work well for that. Let me, I'm going to give it a try anyway. Yeah, this is going to work really good for these plates. This is a 10 by 10 inch piece that I cut out. And man, it grips them. And so there is not, they are not gonna rattle. That's gonna work good. So let me see if I can go smaller for the bowls. <laughs> I'll have to find a way to repurpose all these paper towels now. <laughs> But you see how much bulk I'm getting rid of. It's so windy right now. I don't know where to put them. I'm going to put them in here for now. <laughs> I think I'm going to cut one to place in the bottom of this that's exactly this size. I think this is going to work out a lot better. I mean, all that I'm really hearing rattle here are these things. These little... There's some rattle in there. But see, whenever I can't get it, I can just do this. I have extra. So let me go with a little, little bigger one. I may want to cut more of these 8 inch pieces. I have used a lot of the 6 inch, but the 8 inch will be good for this sort of thing where I can just wrap it around it. And then I just stuff the extra in wherever. <laughs> and I think it's just going to work out a lot better, take up a lot less space. and. I won't have to waste so many paper towels that way. So. This paper towel thing here is driving me crazy. I bought the one that doesn't spin and unravel. Here, let me show you. I bought the one that it doesn't unravel this way because it's kind of ratcheted, but what's happening is it's blowing to the side and unraveling like this so I'm gonna have to put something here that'll keep it from doing that I don't think that'll be difficult to figure out a way to keep it from coming off this edge <laughs> a future project that I want to do is add a shelf in here because I have the room as you can see up above but I use this spring-loaded bar, this kind of bar right here, and I stretch it across here and it holds everything in. I probably don't actually need that bar across there. It just gives me that extra bit of protection in case when these doors are closed, if something were to hit them, it might pop them open. And instead they'll hit this and it'll slow that impact down and keep that from happening is my thought. It's been working out well, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. Here you can see I have a colander. Let me show you that. It's a little collapsible colander, so it takes up very little room. It's made out of like a silicone and a plastic and it just collapses. And it's been working really good. And <laughs> those, those who have been watching my videos a while know I like my pasta, so I had to have a colander. 
and my other colander took up so much space. I'm glad to have this one now. So this is what I decided on this bulkhead mural. I feel like to keep this kind of thing going across the entire wall is going to overwhelm this small space. And so I'm going to keep it more on the geometric side and just sort of design oriented, more um, decorative, I guess, which I think will look really nice in here. and take a lot less time because I need to get it done um, before my summer travels. So I'm going to keep working. You can see here I've already started some of the more geometric elements and I'm just going to keep working up the wall and <laughs> see where it takes me. <laughs> every shape, there's a million ways to mess things up and I need some time to figure out what to say and make our troubles disappear oh, tomorrow's near. so I'm really liking this so far <laughs> I really like how the black and the white and the middle gray play off of each other. The contrast is really nice. And I think I'm gonna keep everything fairly monochromatic. And once I kind of get that grid structure laid in, I'll start working in some patterns. I'm just gonna create a design across here that will allow me to, if I want, bring in my drawings and hang them on the wall and then fit right in. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to keep going. I may change my mind a few more times. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not afraid to change my mind. I'm not. Changing my mind allows me the freedom to live outside the status quo. And that's always been my goal. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to call an end to this and keep working on the wall. I hope you liked it. If you want to keep seeing the progress and see where it goes and how many more times I change my mind. <laughs> uh, subscribe. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Give me a reason to get out of bed. I need a minute to think or maybe two. Yesterday I lost control and said some things I felt that you should know I need a day to clear my mind